Hi, I'm Shelley Rays. You might know my work in creating culturally competent teams across the Australian workforce, but you might also know me for dismantling the common myths about the voice to parliament. And today I offer clarity about the voice being permanent and risky. Well, let's start by talking about a few bodies that I'm sure you've heard of. There's the Federal Council for the Advancement of Aborigines and Torres Strait Islanders. Then there's the National Aboriginal Consultative Committee. Of course, the National Aboriginal Council and the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Commission and the National Indigenous Council. Well, actually, I'm sure you've never heard of them and that's not surprising. They were all put in place to drive better outcomes for First Nations peoples, but abolished at the whim of government of the day or disbanded because they had no real support from government. And so those better outcomes weren't delivered at scale. By enshrining the voice into the constitution, it can't be abolished at whim. The entity will be permanent in order to protect it and its responsibilities to government. But there are some things that should change, such as how it will function, such as the model or what I call the mechanics of the voice. When the mechanics are changed over periods of time, you ensure that the voice draws on lessons learnt along the way, and that means that it remains fit for purpose as time goes on, and that manages risk. And so while the entity itself will be permanent, the mechanics won't be permanent. They'll be passed through Parliament as legislation instead of enshrined into the Constitution to allow the how-to to change as and when required. For a full understanding of the voice and my top eight myths, go to my original video, Voice to Parliament Demystified, and get in touch if you'd like me to be your next keynote speaker on the voice.